Oh, hey, hey. That's Jay Murphy. Peter. Chloe. Um, Lewis. Clive. Kim. Jordan Cards. Yes, my man. I'm famous, so, like, we got a couple of minutes. <laughs> so, man, trying to get a little bunch in before we start, isn't it? Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Howdy. Yes, Anthony. Bless you, Dolly. Come on, Cam. Come to my school and you add me back on Instagram. <laughs> Of course, it's nothing but love for you, bro. Well done. All of your hard work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Inspirational work, bro. Sparks, beautiful. Shannon, excellent. Boxing Barry. I love your channel, Boxing Barry. It's absolutely awesome. Hi, Mark, and your beautiful lady. She's here. She's kind of like just going on like she's not on this thing, but look. I'm here. <laughs> Come on, get I closer. I am here. Listen, come. Just give me a sec, babe. All right, just give me a sec. People call me. Any motivational speech? Any, of course, always. Always. Motivational speech. Always. My wife hates when I speak. Why well, I've got food in my mouth. Which is true, right? Mm. Loving what you're doing. Love to sit down with you one day. Experience. Podcast, bless you, bless you. There's just so much on the plate right now for me, and I've just started recording my own podcast. It's really hard. So experience real podcast. Please forgive me. I've kind of had to ease off from other people's platforms and try to just develop my own. I really got a lot of visions and ideas how I can serve the community and people and help them, and it really has been taking up a lot of my time to do that. So yeah, we'll, we'll get that done one day. Yeah, it's all those that are coming in. Mark camera hugging. Oh, it's Mark camera hugging. <laughs> just, yeah, just let yeah, me it, know. Yeah, he is actually camera hugging and yamming away. <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> see more and more people, they don't want to see me. It's that time already. Yeah, it is. More and more people, they don't want to see me. It's my wife they want to see you. Yeah? So I'm just going to have to create a platform for her. <laughs> Robert, man. Yes, Rob. Can't wait to talk to you today. Um, get me on the podcast, says Jay. Well, let's have a chat, Jay. You can sort that out. You can stop talking to Motivational me. speech, please. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I've got one. Yeah, mm. when his mouth is empty, he's got one. Mm. We need a live video. Send a request. Yes, good. We're going to get you. One day, love. Yeah, big respect. Thank you, man. Thank you. Kate, Katie joined. God bless you, Katie. No oh, more food. No, no more, more food. food. That's enough food. No more food. No <laughs> No more food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna bite anymore. Come on, get in there. Okay. Thank you. Cheers, close. Stop hugging the camera. Put it back a bit. There. there you go. All right. That is awesome. Fantastic. Love. Oh no, my croissant. <laughs> oh, my croissant dropped. Oh man. Um, have mercy. <laughs> okay, so what's the time? What's the time? We're gonna start soon. We are going to start. This is so exciting. I just, I love this. I love you guys. I want to thank you so much. Because imagine, yeah, you got this vision. You want to do things and serve people and and no one comes on. So this is dead without you lot. You lot make this happen. Absolutely. So I'm just letting you know how much I love you and respect you. And I'm so grateful because you don't have to come on here. You don't have to listen to me. Um, so I'm just so glad that you do. And I just want to be able to give back some value to you. Much needed today, yes. Blessings, Zali. 
Yeah, we got hey, something for my you Hey, my Cherrylicious is on. Hi, <laughs> Auntie Cherry. <laughs> so, shall we start? What's the time? You let's get it cracking. Let's, let's get it popping. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me stick to time. Okay, four minutes in. It says, welcome for me, Dr. Prince OB. A wonderful and a welcome for my beautiful host. The Zine Prince. I like to call her Queen The Zine. <laughs> um, a special welcome from the Kyan Prince Foundation team. I meant it. You can that. never forget them because they're always in the background. Without them, I can't really get on doing what I do because I always need to holler at them to help me make things happen. Okay, guys, we want to say a special thanks to the whole team. Juliet, John, um, Angela Kite, Jordan, Cars, um, Kofi, and just wonderful individuals. I'm really honored to have a special team of people that have been working with me. And we've had other people coming on board doing volunteering work. Tony, pugilist man, come on and done workshops with me. Lance, come on and done workshop with me. That's his real name's Gary Williams. Um, we want to thank him. You know, we want to thank the people that have helped over the years. Ellen Bryant helped over the years. Champagne J helped over the years. Wouldn't be at this point without all the help and support that I've had through different people, Tom Lyons, there's just so many, I can't even remember, but I just want you to know that we are thanking you today. Also, I want to thank all the people that donate That's right. and give, and I'm just trying to sort something out because I want to at least give people that donate a thank you, a special thank you, because we are really grateful. Um, the, the lifeblood, if you see many charities, it's so hard with small charities, they die away after a while, they can't make an impact because nothing's happening. So for all you people that are donating to KPF, it don't matter the amount, it just, it's irrelevant. The fact is, you've made the effort to donate something towards a charity right. that really cares about the community, cares about young people and wants to give them an opportunity. Okay, what else have I got here? Um, yes, I want to... Are these your notes? No, this right here, my notes. Okay. okay, so another note I made today is like every week I want to honour my mum, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Prince. I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be who I am, I wouldn't be here obviously without my mum. There's special people in my life that's enabled me to be here before you, and if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Uh, my creator, oh God, my creator, that is evident, because you know nothing would be functioning without him. But besides God, my creator, my son, my son, I wouldn't be in this position had it not been for the wonderful person that my son is and was, and the awesome individual that my mum um, was and is because my mum was the one that was so gentle and strong and powerful you know we often don't give the spotlight to the strong character of a woman we look at the guy's strength we look at the guy's power and you know we look at my dad he was a boxer and all of this but really my mum was the powerhouse because her strength of character to keep going despite whatever happened. She was looking after, yes, Dr. Marvea, bless you. She was looking after my dad and Herbert, Marvin, I love you, brother. My mum was looking after my dad. When my dad, well, my mum could have just said to my dad, leave him, good, you know, you weren't dealing with me all that good a lot of the time, so now it's my turn, but she didn't. She showed wonderful character, showed him pure love, and showed us how to deal with people that may not have dealt with us well. And that's why that forgiveness is there in my heart. And I thank my mum for being a warrior and always believing in me when I was out on the streets and I was doing things that wasn't good. And she always believed in me that I was going to turn things around, okay? Um, we've got a great guest today. Okay, so a quick note of inspiration. So here's what I realised this week. I realised this all the time, but I wanted to share it this time. And it's about the power of gratitude, okay? There are so many of us... Did you just push my hand off? There's so many of us... <laughs> Not deliberately, <that> sweetheart. <laughs> there's so many of us, yeah? 
that um, are feeling quite low and are feeling down about stuff, yeah? And I realize, now wait a minute, while I'm repeating all the stuff that I'm grateful for, while I'm feeling and experiencing what I am grateful for, I'm, I'm alive. I woke up, I didn't have to wake up. I've had calls from people who, who, who told me that their loved ones didn't wake up and I knew them. You know, I remember I had a phone call from uh, my friend who was married, his wife left the home. He didn't know that was the last time he was gonna say goodbye to his wife. So whether they left in an argument, whatever state they left in, they neither of them realized that was the last time they were gonna meet up and speak. And unfortunately, he never ever got to, to see her again. She died and um, we, we, there's no guarantees so why don't we spend time being grateful? We've got this lockdown. There's so many people that are depressed. Hey, Rachel. <laughs> so many people that are down. And I'm telling you this right now. Even if you sat there and started writing a list, even if you sat aside thinking, let me think of everything that I'm so grateful for. I'm just going to thank God for it. The area, you don't believe in God, well, just give thanks for what you have then if you don't believe that a creator made you just give thanks just say I'm so grateful for this in my life and you can't feel that gratitude and experience it and experience depression and feeling low and feeling down at the same, same time. time it will lift your spirits and I've taken a moment out for that so I just want to share with you me and, me and my wife want to share with you with a um, share with you a real experience of, because there's a lot of arguments going on, isn't it? Some are wave if there's a lot of beef going on in the yard, a lot of arguments, whether it's with the kids, whether it's the partners, you know, because we're kind of like hemmed in. We feel locked in at the moment. So is anyone finding that there's um, there's a lot more beef going on in the house than normal? Carry on, because no one's in the Wave. <laughs> so, yep, right here, me, enough beef going on in the yard, enough problems. Um, I want to share with you something, yeah? Because um, th there's always another way. So we see married couples and they look absolutely happy and wish we were like them and all of that. A lot of people talk about me and my wife and they feel, oh, the energy and it's lovely. And that's great, but we're just like everybody else. Uh, and we work together. So it's even tougher when you work together because mm -hmm. we're always in each other's space, aren't we? Yep. I Always. love being in her space, by Me the way. Me too, though. <laughs> so what happens is this. You you clash because she's a really strong character, really <laughs> mighty warrior she and is. And so is he. And, and, you know, she's Jamaican, so like, Ma they don't excuse, mess around. Hello? Uh -uh. What is that supposed to mean? That means that you're, you know, you forward in speaking, <laughs> you know, they're forth with, with their expressions. <laughs> And they speak their no, mind. Mark, it's because of who so, I am. Okay, it's so who she is, yeah? Okay. But you guys know what I mean anyway, no. yeah? But anyway, we had some confrontation this week. And and it was like neither of us wanted to just leave it. And what happened when we did leave it, when we did leave it, um, I thought to myself, wait a minute, what's what's the bottom line here? Do I want to keep this attitude or do I want to keep this atmosphere between us? So I made a choice. What did I want? Okay, so here's what you've got to do. You've got to ask yourself the bottom line. What do you want here? Do you want to win? Do you want to, do you want to, you want to be right? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Or do you want to, and if, if, if you know that, oh, I know I'm right, they need to apologize, they need to this and that, <laughs> and then you hold on to that, what happens? Do you get the pleasure of enjoying what you really love is your partner's company or the good relationship with your family or your parents or whoever it is? Do you get to enjoy them and be present enjoying them? No, you don't. What you get is that I'm right, they shouldn't be saying this, shouldn't be doing that, blah, blah, blah. So we keep that strong shield up and you know, they best do this or I'm not. And then it creates and grows into something sometimes yep. and gets bigger than it really is. When, when, when time isn't promised us, tomorrow isn't promised us. So let's sort things out today. 
let's get things on a, on a level where you might have to humble yourself when it was them mm -hmm. that started the problem. Now, this is deep for some people. This is a real challenge. Yep. You might have to be the one. Show me it. Put your hands up if you agree that this is a really tough challenge for all of us. That, you know, I thought to myself, wait a minute. I love my girl to bits. I don't want to be arguing with her over foolishness. So let me make a joke out of this thing. And let me just laugh about this thing, yeah? And when and he was making the joke, I was like, bugger off, I don't want to talk to you. Leave me alone, you're so rude. You see? You see? <laughs> so, so you're going to make a choice and the other person might not be feeling what your choice is. But you can't worry about that. You've got to you've got to embrace what you're doing, tell him Daz. <laughs> anyway, show that I don't want to talk to you. You cheeky. have got to make your choice and stand by it, knowing <laughs> that you're doing what's right and it's out of love while you're doing but it. Then when he was there texting me and I was there thinking, oh, this guy just never stops, does he? I was thinking, what the hell am I vexing him for anyways? I couldn't even remember. <laughs> So then I just left it. I thought, let's give him a call and tell him to come and get his dinner. <laughs> so, so do you see how we can change the atmosphere? We could change the energy of situations if we decide, like, if you know that I don't want this, I don't care about being right or wrong. The reason why we have to take this stance is because all of us are a mess. Yep, we're all a mess. We're all, we all make mistakes. Mm. We all see things in the wrong way. And we're all going to get it wrong. And we're all going to have disagreements with each other. With it. Brother, sister, mum, yep. dad, partner. It don't matter. Children, parents. We're all going to see things in a different way. It's about being able to understand that, you know what? What's more important? We can agree to disagree. Let's keep it moving and just get back to loving each other because we don't know if we're going to have tomorrow. That's true. And, and, and there's more of you yeah. that should be understanding my point now mm. because sadly, a lot of us have lost loved ones mm. and they're sick. And or when they're, they're sick, you start thinking, oh gosh, I might, mm. imagine if I lose this person. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Those thoughts come into your head. And I want you to always live like that. Yeah. I want yeah. you to live with the bottom line I want you to live with the foundation of the mindset That's it. that is it worth it? Nope. And, and, and and if this if I lost this person tomorrow, would when they're gone, would I be able to say, well, they never said sorry, I don't don't matter anyway. You wouldn't. Everything would just be would shrivel up and become insignificant and not important anymore. So look at the stuff that you haven't forgiven others for. Look at the stuff that's hemmed up. I was explaining this to someone, I've got to say this, yeah. I know I've gone over time a bit, but I've got to say this. I was explaining to someone, keeping stuff in, not explaining how you feel, not getting it out, because my miss can get out what she wants to say, and it, she feels better because I've given her an opportunity to, to speak. speak. Yeah. And then I can get out what I'm saying to her, and she gives me an opportunity to speak. Yeah. When we're both arguing and speaking over each other, you both come away upset because whatever the energy of say. the problem is yeah. it's hemmed up inside yeah. of you so it hasn't been released what happens to that the only way is to get it out if you haven't gotten it out even though you might feel like you're okay you're that's in okay. there sometimes okay. my car still runs when there's a problem but it still needs servicing and sorting out to clean out everything so the That's engine it. runs, the oil runs, the petrol runs smoothly. And I'm just saying, keep yourself clean because we can do that physically with bitters and with some people do blood cupping and all different things. But how about emotionally? Yeah emotionally and you let's feel do better things. yes and you feel and i don't get those lumps in my shoulders oh my that you have exactly. to massage out <laughs> yes yes but i love to massage but then i like you <laughs> anyway so it's yeah. wonderful so mill <laughs> says for real yep even though it's for real it's when we have, have to, to actually execute do and do it. do it that's, the that's hard part. where we find things very difficult that's the hard part actually doing it because then you hear all these voices in your head ah oh, leave yep. me alone do and do this yep. and you have to combat those voices yeah. by saying nah that's my husband what the hell yeah. what? awesome individual you know what i'm like guys i love people that have transformed their lives turned their lives around and um, and and started a new journey.
So, Robert, welcome, welcome to Inspiration and Reflection uh, on the show this week, my brand. We are uh, honoured. We're honoured to have you, my bro. I'm honoured you are here. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank Let's you for having me up. Let's jump straight into the deep end, bro. Let's mm -hmm. not do no yeah. paddle and no swimming in the shallow. Um, give me a little, give everyone a little bit of understanding about your background, Rob. Um, you know, okay. how you come up, brother? Yeah, uh, my background, uh, I, I grew up in East London. I was raised in, I was, I was born in Newham, yeah. and I was raised in London, in Leighton, and, and Hackney. And um, yeah, I went through quite a, a rough time growing up. Uh, I chose to join a gang when I was 12, and in the first year, that was the first time I ended up having someone when I was 12 in year seven. Okay, okay. Uh, I went <laughs> Come we rewind, come we rewind, yeah. because what I want people to understand is what's going on in the mind of a young person that makes them feel like I'm going to join these guys. And plus, is another thing. Yeah. Are you actually consciously saying I'm actually joining whatever gang name it is? Are you actually saying I'm with these guys? So the so yeah. the answer the second one first, yes or no, and then answer the first one as an open question. What happened to build up for your mind to think I want to join these guys? Do you understand? You get me? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the, the second one, the second question, mm -hmm. um, I didn't consciously say yes, like yes, I'm going to join this gang, this specific gang. This is what they're about. It was just yeah, something, something happened. Something actually happened on a day, and it made me feel like that's what I needed. You know, that uh -huh. attention is what I actually needed because that's what was missing. At, that's why I, I didn't feel it at home. You know, I didn't feel it anywhere else <laughs> apart from that one day when a situation happened and I said yes. So do you, have to say, do you have to say I'm with this gang to feel like you're with them or is it something just natural that you end up falling into and they know here's my friends, here's my guys, here's the guys I move. Is it actually a conscious thing? Because I want to help people to understand what's yeah. going on. Yeah. So uh, naturally, uh, straight away, initially, it's, it's not something that, that you have to say. It happens. It just comes. It comes. And then once you build a reputation within that gang, then you become reassured in yourself within the, within the gang. You have, you have to claim it. Because if you don't claim that you're part of that gang, then you can't be part of the gang. There comes a time where you have to like, stand up. For it because that's the, uh, what you told uh, and, and, and for you, when was that moment? Do you remember? For you, when was that moment? Um, good question. You know what? I think it, I think that moment. I think it happened a couple years after I joined. It happened years later. Okay. It happened yeah, years later. Cool. Yeah. But mentally, when, when you I, when I, I'm with yeah. these guys. Yeah, mentally, yeah, yeah, I was with them. Yeah, mentally, they were my family. They, they meant more to me than anything in the world, you know, mentally, yeah. I got you. So tell us a little bit about the build-up that led you when you already had family, because you, you obviously lived yeah. somewhere, you didn't live with them, yeah. so you already yeah. got family. How does that work? Share with us how does that work for you? What was your walk? Yeah. My walk was, um, so I, I grew up, I was raised with both parents, my mum and my dad, you know, um, there was things that happened in the family home that took place when my dad wasn't home, where he would even go to prison, you know, because of the lifestyle he chose. Or secondly, he would go to rehab because he, he got strung out in heroin and crap and he became what is known as a drug addict. And then through that, growing up as a kid, I never knew at the time, but once my dad came back into the family home when I was eight, <laughs> he came back a different man. And when I say different in a way, he was always... I knew... I knew I was always getting in trouble when I was a kid because I was always getting beat. And you know, when you do something wrong, you get beat, innit? Mm. Well, back then, not these days. So <laughs> um, that made me feel as a, as a kid that my dad didn't care about me. He didn't love me, you know, because all he was doing was punishing me or telling me off you know, for doing something wrong, and I would just get beat all the time. That's and that that made me feel angry towards my father and bitter because I felt that he didn't love me and he didn't care about. Me. So, another situation. Six yeah. months after my dad came back. Hey, bro, the boys to keep it down, bro. Continue, bro. Yeah, six months after, my parents moved to a different property 
and they opened up our family home into a rehab program. So like from the ages of eight until I was in my teens, 15, 15, 17, I grew up with 25 people living in our four to five bedroom house. And they were all people that were coming off drugs. So me and my sister and my brothers were all in one room, you know, five, six people in one room. And we never, we never had our own living room. We never had a family home. We've never had like a home that we can call home as a family. So I remember being, I was 10, my sister was 11. We sat down. I remember this conversation like it was yesterday. We said to each other that, you know what? Our parents don't care about us. They, they don't love us. All they're doing is spending time with all these drug addicts, all these people, and they're not spending time with us. And that's what we felt we needed at the time. So mm -hmm. me and my sister felt that our parents didn't love us, which they did. You know, they did. But we just didn't feel like it. Yeah. And that's what led me to joining the gang in the first place because, um, you know, from experiencing what I was from my dad at home, yeah, and, um, like the, the beats and the, the discipline, is that me? Please, man, I'm listening to everything you're saying because this is really powerful stuff because people are understanding on, what's going yeah. on in someone's personal life yeah. that leads them to start coming away from that connection okay, with their yeah. family that yeah. they have and the connection with another set of individuals in the area. Mm. It's like I never, I never joined the gang just for the sake of doing it. You know what I mean? I didn't just yeah. wake up one day and said, "Oh yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to join the gang. I'm going to go stab people. I'm going to go get involved in drugs." That initially wasn't the thought process. It was just I didn't feel loved by my parents at home. Yeah, um, I was always fighting in school because I was angry towards my dad, and I had a lot of anger. A lot of anger. Yeah. So um. I remember one day I was in year seven and uh, to cut a long story short, I was defending one of my friends who was getting bullied by a bigger guy. Um, so I jumped in and we, we, we had a one-on-one -on -one after school. We had a fight. I won the fight and I didn't know there was a gang at the time. I didn't know. But there was a group of lads, about 10 of them. They, they, they literally came up to me after the fight. They surrounded me and they said, you can fight, man. Like, you can fight. Come join our gang. And they were cheering me on. And it was at that moment when I just thought to myself, oh, that these guys actually show me love. That like, these guys care about, me. you know, my family ain't, ain't doing this. They're, 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 not, they're not even paying me no mind, which they was in, in its essence, but in different ways. So I felt that that was what I needed at that time. And I felt like, yeah, man, I can't be at home. Like, at home feels like a war zone. My dad's always beating me. My dad's always disciplining me. Mm -hmm. I'm either getting beat or to write scriptures out, you know, all of this stuff that I'm, that I'm dealing with. And at that time, it just felt that that's what I needed, which obviously it wasn't. It was so, 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 how did you first sort of like how did that process begin of you hanging out with these guys? And you know, was it somebody speaking to you, getting you involved? Mm -hmm. How was this working? Well, at, at first, it was uh, just a lot of trial, just like I didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, no one taught me, no one taught me about gangs, no one taught me about the road. So I kind of stepped into that situation very naive. I didn't know a thing. So I just kept, I just kept quiet. I kept quiet and I just felt like they were, my, they were my boys, they were my family. So I didn't go home no more. I didn't live at home no more. I literally just started running away from when I was 12. You know, I would go missing for like three months, six months, 12 months. And there was, there was a specific time when I got recognised by a few of the older guys from the block. And they, they, kind of, they kind of took me in under their wing. They took me in under their wing. And I was quiet. I was always quiet, you know. People thought, oh, yeah, I was silent, but violent. But I was quiet because I really didn't know what I was doing, where I was going. I didn't know nothing. So I just kept, I kept quiet because I didn't want to say nothing that was out of place. So I remember them just, yeah, just they, they looked out for me. My parents, I would, have to go, I would have to move from school to school because I kept getting excluded. So by the time I'm 13... Before I, yeah, but by the time I'm 13, I got kicked out of three. Wow. Wow. To a different gang and let them know that I'll be coming to that school just so don't touch me, don't leave me alone because I was part of that gang. During this time, did anyone mm -hmm. sit you down through the system, the school system, and try yeah. to understand what was going on in your life? I can honestly say, because I thought, I, thought, I thought about this time and time again. No, no, no one sat me down. No one tried to understand what was happening. It, they just 
excluded me. They they didn't try anything. They just they gave up on me. They literally your gave behavior, up on me. Your behavior shows up a lot of red flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it does. It's true. Yeah, I, I was getting angry all the time in, in class. If I'm sitting in class in year seven and I, I didn't understand the work I was doing and the teacher wasn't trying to show me anything, I was I would just literally be angry. I would just get angry. You know, I would just snap. I would smash up the whole class. And I would leave, and I would finish up the whole school, and that was what my life was like in school, just angry, temper, and rage out. That, that's, so they didn't like to deal with me, but no one sat me down and tried to talk to me to see what was really going on, you know? Wow, wow. Mm. wow. So, so what was the first thing that you realised that you were sort of changing and getting on a more serious level? Was there anything that anybody was asking you to do, get involved in? Yeah, I knew that, um, I knew that, uh, to fit in more, and the reason why I'm using the word fit in is because I felt like I didn't belong nowhere. You know, I felt like I had no family. So when the gang, when the gang became my family, I felt that I had to do more to fit in because I never had no brothers or sisters that was in the gang. It was just me. Other people had family members or uncles or cousins. Mm -hmm. It was just me on my own, you know. So I felt like I had to do things to fit in more. Yeah. Which obviously, I, you, you, you stab people, you know, you commit certain robberies, you know. Yeah. They sent somewhere to go hurt a rival gang member. You just mm -hmm. go do it. And if you don't do it, then mm -hmm. your class is, you know, a, a P-U-S-S-Y and you can't be part of the gang and all that stuff. And I, so I let's, didn't be, know. let's be real about this. What are you talking about here that they expect you to do? They expect you to do whatever it takes. They expect you to, to do whatever it takes, man. Make whatever it, it takes. Make it real for us. Yeah. Um... The gang expected me to, they, they expect us to go and attack a rival gang member, whether that's to stab them, shoot them, kidnap them, and and hurt them, because we're part of that gang, innit? And if we're not doing that, then we can't be part of the gang. You know, you can't ride out. And if, you, and, if you, and, if, and if you're isolated and you're left alone, you get picked on, you get bullied, you know, you get beaten up. You get you would get taken advantage of if you didn't become someone that was well-known within that gang and do things that you had to do, even though you didn't want to do it. Because so, of the area. So, so even though you were, you felt mm. like you was a part of something, you wanted to be a part of something. At the same time, you didn't I felt feel, that I needed. You didn't feel I that, felt that because you just expressed no. about how you know you you would you would sort of like be violated and, and not dealt with right if you wasn't respected within that hierarchy. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. so where did, did you have a? Did you have aspirations? to be that guy in your head at any time at all. Where was yeah, you in the food chain? Um, me in the food, in the food chain was, I was just, I wanted to be a guy where everyone just knew not to mess around with me. Like, I was just a nutter. I didn't care what I would do to anyone. I didn't care if I used a knife on you, a gun on you. I just, I didn't care. I, I was hurting so much inside. And, and, and I wanted to just hurt people, man. So everyone knew, don't mess around with me, you know? Because I've seen a lot of my friends get stabbed and slashed in the face, and I've seen a lot of my friends get shot and stabbed multiple times to the point where the knife broke off in their leg, and we have to rip open their jeans and we have to shout for help. You know, and I didn't want that to happen to me, so uh, I became more violent. And um, yeah, man. Did you I, did you I, notice that any of the things that you were experiencing was affecting you as a person? Did you notice any of that, or did that all come later? I realised that, so I joined the gang when I was 12, and I only realised that it was affecting the way the person I've become when I was 17. I see. When I was 17, that was the first epiphany, that, that first thought I had, bro, that I, I've actually become a monster. I've actually become a heartless person who doesn't care about no one. I didn't care about no one. I didn't care about a thing. I, just, I was just living my life hurting people, because that was, that's, that's what made me feel better, because that's what the gang... There's, there's a lot of to toxic masculinity. You know, within a gang. So, what gives a gang member value is dressing the best, selling drugs. You know, mm -hmm. hurting rival gang members. Um, right, yeah, riding now and just being. Yeah. So, 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 tell me this, bro, because as you're going through this process, do you have any thoughts that think, well, I just, I just stabbed one brother. You know, like. I wonder how his parents feel when he's gone in. I wonder what's happened to him. Was there any thoughts like that that went on in your head? So, this is a hard truth, yeah, and the truth is this. And um, 
it's took me a while to come to a place where I can just be open about this stuff, you know. But I have to be mm-hmm. transparent for things to change. Yeah. yeah. So, um, thank you. Being, being a kid, I remember growing up, and people, you hear, you hear about stabbings and you hear about shootings, and mm-hmm. you would think to yourself, oh, I wonder what it would be like, you know, because people say some, because you know, you, you, you watch movies and you hear these stories like people having sleepless nights and they're haunted, yeah. they're, they're haunted. So, yeah. I always thought, if I can do it, you know, and if I'll be all right. So I remember, man, that the first time I did use a knife with someone, and uh, I didn't think about, I didn't think about what he was going through. I didn't think about his family. The only thing I I, I was thinking about at that time, which I know is 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 not the best thing, but I was thinking about myself. I was thinking about what everyone else would think about me in the area that I was growing up in, because if they thought I was weak, then they would they would pick on me. They would, they would, they would me. If they if they thought that that I'm um, some guy who you can just walk all over, I would have became more of a victim than than I did. So I used it on someone, just thinking people need to know that you can't mess around with me, and uh, that was that's just the honest truth, you know. And I remember just looking at the knife. I remember seeing blood on it. I remember, you know, going going like going home after thinking if I could sleep at night, and I, I slept I slept fine. I slept alright, and, and I just thought, oh. You know, oh, this is where I can do this, and that's you, just. Is that because you didn't know the outcome yet? Because I didn't know the outcome because you done the act and then you went off, so you don't get to see the damage. Yeah, I didn't. You didn't, didn't see the only, damage. Only years later, yeah. Only like only like fifteen years later, when I've changed, oh, you know, and things have happened to me, and I thought about the pain you actually inflict on someone and the trauma they go through. You know, oh, the, guy, the guy, the guy had to. Be, he moved house. He moved homes. You know, he moved that like, area, stuff like that. And I thought, man, 100%. imagine that. Imagine living with that paranoia, always worried if something's gonna happen to you. That's that's not nice, man. That's that's what that's what I put him through. So you got physical damage. Yeah, mental. you've got mental, mm. mental yeah. and emotional damage. Um, yes. when did you start? If any, if at any time at all, did you realize that? That it was if actually affecting you, um, that probably around your awakening time. I don't know. But at what point did you start to think about what you were doing and and what actions? What did it lead to when those thoughts came into your head? What you were actually doing? Yeah. Okay. So initially, so I went through life growing up. Yeah, I didn't have no vision for myself. I didn't see myself being a doctor, a lawyer. I didn't see my, the only thing I saw myself doing was being a gang member, being someone that was fed so I can just survive mm. and just live. I, I didn't plan my day for tomorrow or the day after. I never thought I would live, I would make it to our 15 or 16. Me and my friends would sit in the block and we'll discuss with each other. Like, mm. wow, imagine if we make it to uh, 17. What's, what's life going to be like? Mm. Some of our friends died. So then we, we made it to when we was 18 and then we'll just have another conversation. What if we, we make it to when we're in our 20s? I don't want to be on the block in my twenties, and we used to say it to each other. And um, the reason why I'm saying that is because I didn't realize straight away, and what I was doing was wrong. I never realized until the day where, and I'm not saying this in any way to preach, but for me, how I how I came to the realization is that I had an en- encounter with God. I had an encounter with God at church one day, and it was at that moment where I realized, you know, wow, there's actually so much more to life than this. So even though I had an encounter with God and he, and, and he kind of like woke me up in the way to say, Rod, there's actually his hope. The next day, I, I was back on the block. I was back on the block smoking weed. I was back on the block doing what I was doing. Because I didn't, because even though I knew that there was more to life than this now, I didn't know how to change. I didn't know what step to take. I didn't know if I could change, you know. But the difference was this time, was when we would ride out and either attack a rival gang member or, or just come back or whatnot, I didn't. I didn't enjoy it the same way I used to. Ah. No, I didn't. It didn't feel the same. It mm-hmm. felt like I was doing nothing wrong. Like now I knew I can't do this no more. Now, now mm. this is wrong, man. You know, you're actually hurting someone. That's when the. That's when so it clicked. conscience kicked in. Then. Wow. Yes. Gosh, yes. I feel the same, boy. Oh. Wow, conscience oh. kicked in at that point in life. And what? What? T- talk us through that process of change. Yeah. The, yeah. the slow process of change and how you remove yourself from from the norm, what became the norm for you 
of being around a certain mindset. Right? Yeah. So um, the process, it had, it's, it's, it's been a long process and it took many years of trial and error, you know. Some things changed straight away. You know, I left the gang life. But I, I stayed, I kept, I stayed in a criminal. You know, I still committed crime. I didn't know how to get a job, all of that stuff. Mm. But first thing was, I had to move out of the area, you know, which I didn't think I would ever do because I was, I was born and raised in London. I thought that I would be there for the rest of my life, you know, because mm. I love it. It's London, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so my dad, my dad sent me abroad. He sent me to Dublin. I had to go to a program and live in that program for 14 months. I couldn't leave. You know? wow. I to, uh, yeah, it was, it was actually a faith-based program which was designed to help people like me where you would wake up. So, so, so your dad, who had been helping people who were, had addictions, utilised his links to help his son yes. yeah. with a type of addiction. Go on, daddy. Yes, okay? yes, yes. 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 It's true, yeah, exactly that, exactly. That, that. Imagine the same guy who I hated for years, who I was angry at. I treated him so wrong, man. You know, Go on, dad, dad. Respect to your dad. Still, yeah, and he still helped me out when I really needed it, you know? Okay, yeah, so, dad. so what happened was, is that, did you learn how to communicate and develop a relationship with your dad instead, yes. of, instead of what most young people do is make a decision... Yeah that based on their thinking and their belief system, okay, you've done this, so that means this. And when you're young, you think that's the gospel. Okay, you know, dad doesn't do this, mom doesn't do that, that means they don't love me. The teacher says that, the teacher doesn't like me. You know, we have a, a way of, of putting that on everybody else because we haven't developed, you know, that yeah. cognitive side of our minds. Yes to be able to yeah. balance and understand and communicate to get understanding from the other side. So yeah. so you got to a point where you realise that thinking, I'm not saying that dad was always right mm -hmm. in how we dealt with things, but what I'm saying is your thinking, the results of your thinking led you to, to act in a way that if you communicated differently back then, you yeah, might realise the love. If dad had only yeah. known that you felt like you were missing out on that connection with him. He obviously showed you love then. He would have showed yeah. you love back well, then. So maybe that had something that he was struggling with then while yeah. he was caught up in that situation. Yeah. And henceforth, he couldn't even show you yeah. the love that he thought he... It's like, yes, yeah, I, I spoke to my dad, you know, we, have, we talked, we have conversations and yeah. his, his dad wasn't there for him. So he never knew how to be a dad or to communicate in a way. But mm -hmm. me being young and, and naive and, you know, uneducated, I would blame him. Like, you're a bad dad, man. You don't care. But I wish I opened up. I wish I expressed, I let him know what I was going through. And that's what I told the kids now. You know, is that what you were saying earlier? The power of, of, of communicating. You know, just letting, talking to someone. Let them know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Maybe he could have listened to me. Maybe he would have gave me advice, gave me a hug, told me he loved me. That's it. That, would have been, that could have been such a big change if I would have just Excellent. spoke up. Excellent. So if our parents let us down, how important it is it for have someone within the community, whether it be a teacher, a mentor, a neighbor, somebody that takes their time to show that they care about us. How important do you think that is, Rob? I think that's very important because you know, you know, what's, you know what's crazy you say that? It's coming to my mind now. I, got, I had a son here when I was 15 on the way, yeah? Now, my son's mom's mom, he was the person that came to me one day out of the blue when I was really lost, yeah, she came to me and she said, Rob, I just want to let you know, yeah, that, that I still believe in you. And just just that, just that, knowing that someone still believes in me and someone actually has hope for me, that initially made me think, man, you know what? I can actually can do this, man. You know, but if it wasn't for other people, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. So it definitely takes more than your parents, more than your teachers. It takes people within the community to, to help, definitely. Those few words. Some, someone put a note down I read while you were speaking. It said, it's like I'm Rob story. It's like Rob's story is me without the dad. Okay? So this is yeah. impacting people already, Rob. And I'm hoping that the you who's talking about this is realizing that you're not alone. 
there are brothers who have gone through the same, same journey that are hurting. And I, when I go around and do talks with young people, I always tell them, hurting people hurt people. What made me the way I was on road is because the beatings I got was so cold, so vicious. When you're looking at the red and your skin's coming off after a beatdown, and you're getting beaten for stuff you can't even remember, that's how minor they are, then you, in your head, like what you done, I, I believed something that, that, wasn't, that wasn't reality. It was a belief system I had that wasn't reality. It wasn't that my dad hated me or my dad didn't like me. He had his own issues and yeah. he needed help with that. And, and, and a lot of the times, a lot of the stories is that. This guy that said without a dad, I don't know how he, he hasn't got a dad, but he has because he wouldn't be here. But but now he's here for whatever reason. His dad's got issues. Hi, Shanae. Why he hasn't done his bit? I want to give a big shout out to my my family, my little my little uh, um, my little niece, Shanae. Um, yeah, bless you, my darling. Miss you guys. Um, yes, my brother. This is so important to highlight for this guy because right now, yes. Rob. You're saving lives. You're educating people because yes. through our, our communicating, they're getting to understand the process of the journey. Number one, they understand how the system lets down. And I have to say this because I'm very inclusive. I love humanity, but I'm not dumb and I'm not unaware that the system lets down particularly yes. black boys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, don't, they don't give them the support that they need, and it backs <laughs> up their claim that black, black boys are the trouble ones, the ones that are giving all the trouble, doing all the violence. But there's another way, because when I impact on these young people, the, the change that you said you needed, I'm that guy that brings it. I'm that guy yeah. that will come in your school, come in your life, yeah. will make impact with your soul and link with you, and I'll drop that seed in. And I'm just saying to everyone listening, you can do that. With the yeah. boys on the road, you can do that. You could do that with the ones that are making trouble and got no manners. Just say, do you know what, bruv? I understand that not every you is bad, and yeah. some youth are just hurting. And, and yeah. things may not have gone your way, but I'm here. Whatever I can do for you, I will do for you. Mm. That's why I've created this platform as well to give superstars in our community, because that's how I see you guys. You guys are inspirational. You're the stars of the community, unsung heroes that have been able to recognize that a change of mindsets needed. And that's what I think makes somebody so great that's is that it. they're able to look at themselves, look in the mirror and say, wait a minute, I don't like this direction. I don't like where I'm going. I need to make a change or I'm going to ruin and waste my own life while yeah. I'm leaving footprints of poison and pain behind me. Imagine being put on the planet. God's created you to do good. And when you mm. look at your legacy, all you've yeah. left is people with PTSD, post-traumatic yeah. stress syndrome. Yeah. You left people with physical injuries to their body. You left people with emotional stress that goes into other people's lives yeah. because you impact on your relationships with your parents, your spouse. So what's happened? The pain we leave doesn't end there. It continues. So just like the power of love that you leave now, because you're thinking differently, now you're creating a different legacy and different footprints. That's right. And this is what we want to show the youths. We want you to wake up now to see that this platform of gangs, this platforms of violence and anger is just a, a setup mm. for you to leave poison and eventually ruin you. That's it. Because while you're hurting other people, you're really, you're really demonstrating self-hate. Yeah, yeah. You're really yeah. demonstrating because you've told That's me right. in all the time that you've done negative actions, you had no love for yourself. Oh, no way. No, no. It's like this. Something happened to me yeah, when I was 13. And I blame my dad for this because if he wasn't the way he was at home, I wouldn't have kept running away. And it made me even more violent. 
So like I got I got sexually abused, didn't I? I got drugged, I got sexually abused. Mm. I remember that day I left the, I left the guys home. I salute yeah. you for being yeah. open, brother, and being oh, real. Yeah. I, I never you. It's not it's not like it's not like a, a sub story or people to feel sorry for me or anything yeah. like that. It's just that that's what happened, didn't it? That was my reality. Yeah. But people thought I was crazy. They thought I was crazy. I wasn't crazy, man. I just got angry. sexually abused. I felt, I felt worthless. I was angry. Yeah. Angry at my dad. Angry at life. And the only thing that made me feel better was to hurt someone. And not even just that. If the, if the olders on the block would have looked at me and said, what you're doing is wrong, I would have changed. I, I wouldn't have hurt someone. Oh, wow. they, made, they made me feel good about it. You know, they made, they, made, they made me feel good about hurting someone else. So that encouraged me. So the seed was planted and they nurtured that seed in you. Gosh, man. Wow. Mm. So olders have a massive responsibility, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, there's olders that know better and there's some that actually don't. But the ones that do know better and they're not helping or, or, or doing better, that's they're, they're the ones that are really destroying our, our communities. Wow, they have a big impact on a lot of young people that are vulnerable. You know? So, do you think we as a community can do more to yeah. promote this this good mindset? Yep. Um, and to to call out and expose the ones that are doing it because we talked about fear, Rob. Mm. We talked about yep. fear. There was yep. the fear of of change. Yeah. You know, what kind of things did you go through? Because there's young guys that really yeah. they realize I don't want to be in this, but what's stopping yes. them? Yeah, all right. So like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it for me personally, and then I'm going to speak from other gang members' perspective that I've spoke to that are proper on the road. For me, I was afraid to change because what held me back was all the people that I've done wrong to, right? What mm. about them? What about if I turn my life around, if I stop carrying a knife, if I stop carrying a gun, What's going to happen when they see me? They're going to kill me. And I'm going to be left with nothing to defend myself. So I just got to take it. That was one of the biggest fears, mm. which stopped me from not stopped me from not wanting to change, but stopped me from making that change, if that makes sense. Now, I spoke to a, I spoke to a lot of gang members. There's, there's, I spoke to a, a lot of hardcore proper gang members that have shot people, stabbed people. And they've turned around and said to me, all right, I hear what you're saying. You know, I hear what you're saying. But what if I change? What if I lack? What, what, what's going to happen? And from personal experience, all I can say is that if you do really want to change, you have to prepare, prepare yourself mentally just to know that there are, there are things that we've done wrong. There's a lot of things I've done wrong. Yeah? There's a lot of things that I'm done, I've done wrong, I'm apologetic for. And if, I, if the opportunity presented itself to make it right, I would humble myself and make it right. But at the same time, there's consequences, right? Consequences for actions, good or bad. I, I've had to prepare myself mentally just knowing that, you know what? Some 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 days they may leave me alone. Some days they may come and get me. But at least then I would have paid the price for what I've done. You know, it's a, it's a, it's it's. You know what? I'm gonna talk, be honest, man. It's hard. It's hard, man. It's hard every day to just leave my house knowing about the things I've done, and so I, I feel unsafe, man, all the time. And the only thing that keeps me sane and keeps me straight is the relationship that I've built with God through reading the Bible, praying, studying, you know, and God has kept me safe over the years. And it's not because I'm a big, bad man, I'm tough and all of that stuff. Because deep down, deep down, yeah, I'm, I'm a softie, man. Deep down, I'm, before all of the stuff that, before all of the violence and the anger, you know, and all of that madness, I'm just a normal guy, man. I'm just a, I'm just a young man who just, I'm, I love people, man. I love, I'm a people person, you know? And, um, I've had to strip myself of all of that stuff. And now I'm just, I'm, I'm, who, I'm who I'm supposed to be. But now I've got the thought of what I've done. So that makes it tough transitioning from a roadman to being normal. Where, yeah. Where normal is, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's really but there is hope. There, there, there is hope, man. There is hope because if God can keep me safe, yeah, and even all the bad things I've done, mm -hmm. God can keep me, you know. And it's just faith, believing and accepting what you've done trying to make oh, right by it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, I would rather die now knowing, like, living the life I am now than, I, than, than when I was a gang member. Do you know what I mean? That's so beautiful. Mm. That's so but a lot beautiful. of people, a lot of people, once they're in a gang, they don't, they don't actually think about their life 10 years from then. Yeah. They don't think, they don't think, they don't, they don't see themselves living 
to that mm. age. So yeah. I'm saying that because I, I want everyone here, if you're young and you're in a gang or you may be fitting to go down that path, to inter entertain this thought. Imagine if you do make it to you're in your late 20s, early 30s. What do you want to be doing then? You know? So based on the choices that you make now, yeah, you have the power to make a better choice before before you in your late twenties, before the thirties come and you actually want to change. Because there's so much more stuff to deal with, man. The guilt, the, the, the hurt, the pain, the remorse, you know. I got I got kids. I got kids that I choose not to take them out in London to certain places because of the choices that I made. Yeah. Because I know if I walk down the street, if I drive down that road and they see me and I'm with my sons, they might try to get me again. You know, That's not saying they will, but there's yeah. a possibility. That's there's right. always that potential threat and that yeah. risk. And you're not you know, to take that chance with your child. Yeah, I'm not willing to take it. Yeah, I'm not. I can't. I can't, man. I yeah, can't. So right. there's, there's times I want to see my kids, but I can't. You know, and there's times yeah. I can't. But it's tough, man. I salute you, King. I'm, I'm, I'm mm. honored that you come on. Um, I'm so pleased that we could give this platform to you and we could share this conversation so yeah. other people can also um, understand as well because yeah. that's what this is for um for, for people to have a platform where they're not getting the platforms that they need we're listening to the news and all these kind I, of stuff. I actually got some um, but the news has got an agenda i just got some understanding yes. from listening to you that because i'm always baffled like what is wrong with these kids don't they realize they're so young it's like they haven't got an aspiration to live past their teenage years yeah, so yeah, that, you're yeah. just stuck in it. Like, hello, you can go to 30 years old. You're allowed. Yeah. That, that's, that yeah. will be an eye opener for me. Yeah. Like, I'm always baffled. Like, why are you guys doing this? Why are you trying to finish your life now? You know? So yeah. thanks for that insight. Well, Mike Tyson said it when he was in that mindset. He said he didn't think he was going to live over a certain age. Mm. He never ever thought he would be, much less 50 odd years old now. So it's mm. even shocking. So but, Ray, Ray said, but, Rachel said, most Rachel young said. people I work with don't, do not think beyond a day ahead. I didn't Listen, even know that. I had to wow. keep this going with you, Rob, because it was so powerful. Wow. I want to bring in Sarah now. Um, okay. But I want to thank you once Thanks, again. Rob. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, thank Good. you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank, no, you. Bro, thank you. And just let me know what I can do for you and how we can work together. Okay? Okay. It's yes. about making thank an impact you. together. We're, we're on the same patch. I've already got a great idea, okay, where we could get get us out to reach so many more people without even meeting them. Okay? Amen. Beautiful. Yes. So nice we'll stay in touch, all right, Rob? I'll take care. Let's See you soon. Thank right, you again. Bye. God bless, bro. Okay, bye. Why is it not going? Uh, there yeah, it's going. Okay, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Okay. Yes, my next guest coming on. Wow, that was, that we just powerful. got a salute, uh, uh, Rob. Firstly, um, absolutely. How we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? I really. This is my first time that I'm actually meeting with Sarah, but I knew that she was going to be like this. Is it? <laughs> because, I, because I already picked up her energy by speaking to her and listening to a bit of her story, I realized she had to have this energy to be able to go through the stuff that she went through. So I just want to um, introduce Sarah to everybody. Um, Sarah's gone through a long journey with her, her son. And, and I want her to share that journey with, with you guys and even start with before you gave birth your feelings about, you know, having this child and what was going on beforehand, yeah? Are you getting deep now, Mark? You yeah, want to I'm getting I always got deep. <laughs> this is the truth, man. Right, I'll, I'll take it from the start. You're saying about um, before I had camp, I was, I was 21. Yeah. Um, what did I want out of life? I wanted to be a mum. Um, my friends wanted, I know I've got 42, so I'm going to show me age. My friends wanted Levi jeans and they wanted to own their homes and they wanted the BMWs and they wanted the best looking men in the world and all that. Mum, yeah. I wanted to be a mum, you know. Um, I'm a very caring person and our children are gifts from God and they're gifts. So I'm like, yeah. you know what? If I'm a mum and I'm the best that I can be, I've won. So, 
at the age of 21, I feel pregnant. I'm like, yeah, here we go. Everyone's like, are you want a boy or girl? Like, yeah, right. I want to become a mum. Um, read all these books, put your your feet above your heart at three o'clock every day. The circulation goes round. It's good for the placenta. Um, yeah, I loved it. And then, not going into it too much, but the hospital cocked up massively. And um, Camp was um, starved of oxygen for six minutes, um, which caused him to have a massive brain hemorrhage. And uh, he was dead on arrival for six minutes, as I said. And then before you know it, you, um, your boy of seven pound eight is laying in the intensive care with these babies that are like, like two pound. Mm. So my dad, my dad was, um, I, I am who I am because of my dad. My dad was, was, was my inspiration. He was a publican, you know, he was, well, life's, life's too short to be miserable for the post money face, you know? He you think your life's hard, someone else has got one well, better than, you know, worse than you. And I remember him standing in the intensive care and I just went, why? Why? Why me? When all I wanted was to have a child. You know what he said? He went, anyone can be a mum, anyone can be a dad, anyone can be a toast, a special mum to have a special kid. He went, you've got it in your wow. and, I'm, and I'm like, and you're talking about a man who's been married five times, had six kids, was a jack the lad, do you know what I mean? Walking about the man on the be out. And I went, what? He went, let me tell you something. He said, you work down Rath by Market. He said, you see all them People on the social, and the kids ain't even got a coat on, and they're dragging their flip flops and they're screaming at their kids, oh, yeah! Did you imagine them people having a baby like that? Well, they don't care for it, they just get excited over this big living events. But you know when things just drop, Dad, like, you know, but you know? Anyway, so I said, Well, what am I going to do? He said, You're going to accept it, and said, You're going to move forward. When we brought him out of hospital, he was 17 days old. I was not allowed to take my child home until I knew CPR. Um, ABC, which is where I was breathing and circulation. He had to sleep on a mat because they said, you know, he's like 99%, um, he's going to die on you. He will, he will go. Um, you only get cerebral palsy uh, through either a brain hemorrhage or lack of oxygen. Cham got both. They couldn't get their head around it. Um, anyway, so he was on five bottles of medication, like different meds a day. He was fitting like you wouldn't believe. When he was in hospital, he had to be put on a, in a coma for, for eight days because he was fitting through the sedatives. He was fitting on life support. Anyway, I said to my dad when you got over that, but he was about a month old. I said, what do I do? He went, I don't know what you mean. I said, well, do I wrap him up in bubble wrap or do I treat him normal? They went, you're not stupid, Sarah. He went, wrap him up in bubble wrap, protect him, don't let the wind blow on him. And, and I'm going... He went, and then when you're dead, what's going to happen? I did, <laughs> bang. So I was like, oh. He went, Sarah, champ first, disability second. It's going to be hard. And going through life, I, um, my mum said to me, I think you need a little bit of support. You know, go find a group. Go to the group. I was blessed that I've got my child. I feel sorry for myself. Go and speak to other mums. They're going through it. They know. So champ was three. Um, my first relationship failed, you know, because the biological father couldn't cope. So he decided to walk. Found it an emb embarrassment. Anyway, so I joined, uh, I joined this um, cerebral palsy network for Newham. Oh, well, I'm from Newham and all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, goes and, I goes and joins. So I'm all sitting there on my own. And they're going to me, ah, and I can't stand that. Ah, I have old sentence. I see three. So this mum went to me, um, my boy's CP as well. So I said, okay, okay. And I'll never forget, I can see her now. She went, if he don't walk by the time he's four, he never will. And I remember grabbing him from the floor, putting him in the buggy, running all the way home to my mum. Champ walked at five. Wow. So what, that I'm a lot like you, like, um, I don't want pity or people feel sorry for me or tell me I'm great or tell me I'm crap. I don't want that. I want these poor mums and dads out there that are going through having these disabled children. Um, I don't want them to feel that pain that I felt. Another one, nappies. Someone said to me, oh, he's seven and he's still in nappies. Got no chance. Bribe him. Give him a pound for a wee and give him a fiver for a poo. I said, what are you talking about? Put fairy li Listen, another one went, put fairy liquid in a potty. So when he wees, it makes bubbles. Anyway, like a fool, I tried everything. <laughs> my, listen, my, listen. my niece fell pregnant 
15. Champ was nine. Listen, I said, Champ, I said, ah, I'm not going to say her name, blah, blah, blah. She's having a baby. Champ looked at me like that. He went, get it off. I went, what? Me and Mark, you know Mark, my husband, stood there and froze. He went, get it off. He started shaking. I went, get it off. He went, my nappy. I went, why? Makes me go cold. He went, how can I look after a cousin in a nappy when I'm wearing one myself? Bang, oh, got me. <laughs> so again, this is what I want to tell people. Don't listen yeah. to the put fairy liquids in a bloody potty or give them a fiver for poo. I would have made him constipate for a month. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? It's all them. Let him go through his process. It's a process, isn't it? Of course it is. So, so along your process, yeah. what are some of the things that were really important to you that you learned? Because I can only imagine the challenges you faced mm. every day. Mm. And, and uh, people allow fears to grip them and prevent them from doing what they really yeah. should be doing. I'm so not... you, your dad played a big part. Because some of the stuff your dad was telling is huge. They're massive keys. So how was you actually dealing with some of your fears? Right, you know, Bob said stuff earlier, like, there's being honest, there's letting you know a lot of stuff, and then there's letting you know the whole shebang. Well, yeah. because Bob was just honest, I'm going to be honest. There's one fear that me and Mark live every single day of our life, and we've even said, now it's never going away. And again, you know your situation you're in, you know my situation. And the biggest fear, and it ain't going to leave us ever, we are petrified when we wake up every morning, our bellies go over. And we mm. even say now, go on, you go and check him. You go and check him. Because I ain't got to get upset, but there's always a fear that... Yeah, it's real, isn't it? It's real. But look, you know, it's like, he made his 13th birthday, he's made his 18th birthday, he's 21 this year. And yeah. you know, even sometimes I'm like, do you reckon, Mark? And he goes, Stop. Wow. That's the only fear we've got left is we're just petrified of opening that door one morning. So think about this. Wow. How about living your belief that every day that I have with him is going to be the best day of my life and I'm going to enjoy it instead of even allowing that fear to have any room or take rent Thanks, in your Mark. life? Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Giving it no room because because one of the fears I had after Kyan was killed, yep. he's at school. He's not making no trouble. Yep. This blew my mind. So now I realize that wait a minute, I've got three other boys. So that means it could be another one of my boys. I can experience this because if yep. I can experience it once, why am I going to think it's never going to happen again? Yep. So this became real for me. Yep. But I had to look at that and say, you have an opportunity still to choose mm. what you're going to believe in and yeah. choose what you're going to sweep to the side. Yeah. I made a choice. I am not going to entertain that fear. Yeah. You are not taking up room in my mind. Yeah. Free room. You get out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to enjoy every single day with my boys. You're, you're saying but, about a day. Like, why, today, why is it called a present, Mark? Why are we living in the present? Because it's a gift. Yes, right. So many people don't know that. Again, like getting back to like Rob before. Do you know what? Do me a favour. If you see him, can you give him a kiss for me? Because <laughs> like you know, like when you're connecting with people, you know, like you know, t today's a gift. Yesterday's gone, and tomorrow's the future. But enjoy today. And I know what you're saying like that fear. Don't even though like it's say one two percent in in both mine and Mark's mind. Um, no. You're right. Don't deserve a place. But then, but then I can hear my father go, whoa, 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 give yourself a break. Because look at everything else you've covered. Look at everything mm -hmm. else you've accepted. Yeah. Wow, you know, that's I mean, right. I I'll never forget, and this was the worst one. Um, Champ's epilepsy was so bad because Champ's brain yeah. damage, um, your brain's like that, like looking down, um, you know. So Champ's brain's like this. All that's missing. It's gone. It's gone. It's bled away. Gone. There's nothing there. So it, um, I got him off his medication for his um, epilepsy when he was five. So they said, when it comes back, I was like, pardon? They said, it will come back because the, brain, the, brain's, the brain's gone. Anyway, came back with a vengeance when he was 13 years of age. Um, 
and we had to go back to the hospital. They'd done scans and all that. So they weren't on meds. So oh, this was awful. Champ, in first, in third first time in 13 years, slept through the night. Because Champ would go, love you, mum. You right, mum. All through the night, love you, mum. Oh, no. no, but you did him, bang, fall out of the bed. And you think, well, that was a cerebral palsy because he's, like, he's got spasticity and he's rolled out, stuff like that. No, 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 no. First night on the first down of medication at 13 years of age, me and Mark woke up, but like that. Champ didn't shout out. So it's the first night's sleep we've had. Mark, you know, you've always said, like, real men cry and that, right? I'm going to swear, sorry, but Mark shit himself. Mm. So, that big door. Like, we thought he was a goner. No, as well as Champ fit during the day, he had been fitting all their years in the night. So when he's going, Mum! Love oh. you, mum. He's wow. Oh, wow. I've slept every night since. And this will make you laugh. Even though we have a little film around the door, sometimes he goes, What do you want? <laughs> he woke me up. Do you know what I mean? He's a 20 year old, isn't he? He's like, Mum, watch. Beautiful. Like, what a learning, isn't it? Wow. What a journey. Please share with us some of the inspiration that you've had because on your journey you must have had professionals telling you stuff that because normally we just want to accept what mm. the professionals say because we think you know what do i know everything they say i need to follow whatever pills they give i need to take and we sort of relinquish our motherly intuition the power that we have, yeah, yeah my arms are heavy. Um, all, all the powers we have, we give it all away. So your motherly intuition about what is right for your son and all of that, you know, just share with me how difficult that is and encourage right. parents but, never to relinquish that. Right, so you're saying about the professionals and the doctors, this is hilarious. My mum um, had four kids, so rent and all. Mark, I don't care if you've got 100 kids. Unless you've got one like Champ, you've got 1,000 kids in one. So mm. my mum was like, right, only I'm the great on Ormond Street. That's the best hospital going. I only deal with consultants, not registrars, you know? Champ didn't get off the sofa at the age... I haven't told you this one before. At the age of seven, he didn't get off the sofa for, for two days. So I said, my mum, I'm taking the baby up new. I'm saying, hey, right. And Champ will never tell you, Mark, when he's in pain because he associates pain with hospital and theatre or pain oh. hospital oh. police us because you're talking about a boy that has been admitted 22 times in the hospital, right? Yeah. Say he's thinking, I oh, tell mummy that hurts. I'm in surgery, right? So two days, I said, right, you boy. I said, we're going, we're going up the hospital. Went in there, see a consultant, not a registrar. Do you know what he said to me? Why do you think he can't get off of a off of a sofa? Even he's got cerebral palsy. Really? Yeah. He said. He said uh, he ain't got a mindset, has he? Like, like. What? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So I said, do me a favour. I said, get away from me. I said, get away from me. And there was a registrar that come in who my mama told me don't mix. Not me. They're learning. But now yeah. I've learned. Learning gives you passion. Exactly. When you're a consultant, you know. Don't care anymore. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Get out! And he was an orthopedic surgeon. This registrar come in, all curly, I'm all nervous. He said, um, "I'm worried." He said, "Because I think it's, <laughs> I think it's um, septic arthritis." So, because I had no knowledge of what septic arthritis is, I mean, oh, my mum's got rheumatoid. Mm. He's like, "No, no, 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 no. Septic arthritis eats bone in 24 hours. It disintegrates, and you're left with muscle." How long has you been like this? So I said, two days." And just like that, it's like a Paul Daniels thing. They had a scan there. Dad, you know with the, with the pregnancy one? Yeah, yeah. He was in theatre within an half hour. He had septic arthritis in his hip, and it was eating what? his hip away. Oh. Who don't know that? The consultant or a new young registrar? This is what I want to try and tell people because how many mums and dads out there going, Yeah, my mum's not out the Great Ormond Street or Great Ormond Street. This is funny, Champs too. Dr. D'Souza, I don't even know if he's still practicing, he's a neurologist, yeah? So the brain guy. Not to look, come in, please. When I walked in, he, he went, Name. Um, oh, no, he went, No, it's not you I'm waiting for, it's for someone else. He didn't even accept that was Champ because Champ's file, now, first time we went there, but Champ's file was that big, but he was expecting a child to be to look a lot worse off 
But do you know why mm. Champ is away today? Because of what, what my dad said. We all have choices. Yeah. Bubble wrap or Champ then disability. Yes, that's yeah, it. I spoke to the child. And this is another thing with Rob. People, people don't talk to you anymore. You know, mm. you know Sunny Ray, the, the, my little one, he's seven. He walks in, I go, hello, Dolly, you look nice. You know, that kid will go to me, Mummy, I love it when you wear that perfume. That's my favourite. It all oh. boils down to talking. Yeah. You know, so I would say to Champ, right, because he's got a sensory impairment. So all of his five senses are 100% are greater than ours. So Champ had a fly land on him once. He had a fit for 20 minutes. Champ didn't go to the cinema until he was 12. Champ didn't touch sand. Champ didn't eat solids until he was five, you know? Yeah. But um, it's, wow. it's, 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 it's just all learning and it's a wow. journey, as you say, but I, yes. my heart breaks for, for people out there that, that are at the, at the beginning stages where I was mm. and listening to all the, you can't even say silly people, but it's the, it's the wrong information. Yeah, mm, it is it's the wrong, the wrong It's the wrong advice. Where would you, what would you tell them to do? What would you advise at the time before they just take on everybody else's advice from the professionals of what they should do and what their child can or can't do? Because I've heard stories like this so many times. The doctor said, I'll never be able to walk. My doctor said, my child won't be able to see my the doctor. And all of those things, the person said, no, that's not what I'm gonna believe. I'm going to believe and make all the efforts to make this happen. That's it. The right. opposite. With, with you me, are not I'm, I'm not blowing. I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but I'm shit hot when it comes to Champ and, 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 and the medical side. So when, when Champ's admitted, I sleep in the bed with him. I have. I, I've got books, pens everywhere. I have a book, um, and it's intake of fluid. It's mm -hmm. outtake of fluid. You know, I, I measure and weigh his urine. I know what time he's fed. I know what antibiotics have gone in. I know what, mm -hmm. what cannula the arm went in. So I'm very... And for parents out there that's very like that and clicked on, the best advice I've got is trust you first. Awesome. You know, I've had people go, but like they look at the veins and they, they'll be looking. Don't open now, but they're beginning. Ooh. i go left arm. Oh, that's going to Left arm, let's check his feet. Oh, this is a good one. And I've allowed him go through pain that's blown. Where have they ended up, Mark? In the left. You, he, you're inflicting more fear on him right. with cancers. But now right. that they're, he actually have blood done Monday for, um, it's a little bit sad. They don't think he's got an immune system at the moment because he's been septic three times. So uh, they've had to do what, what's called like a blood screening. And uh, yeah. straight away, we were talking to the nurse, and she was like, oh, she said, so you sound like you know what you're doing, like, you know, just general conversation. And then she was sitting there, she went, come then, mum, where do I go? So I went, left arm. She went, oh, she's done this before. You know, why can't they be like that with us? So the only advice I've got is listen to your gut, because you yeah. know your child. And do you know what? See my champ, he's 20. If I go in there now and go, move over, boy, let me get in bed, he go, what? But yet, when he's in his hospital bed, and we're having a cuddle, and he's rubbing my arm, and he's saying, thank you, Mum, for what you've done for me. You know, I've had nurses coming. Sorry, Sarah, it's IV time. I only had his IV meds, uh, you know, to, uh, an hour and a half ago. Check me book. Oh, sorry. All the nurses go, we don't know what we do without you. It's the nurses, mate, that, that, you know, that are brilliant. Not these, you know, you've got orthopedic surgeons, and you've got medics. Do you know, it's just a war, because I'm better than you. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, my wife knows Just all about it. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. Trust yourself. Because the belief that you have in your child's life, that's not going to be shared with the professionals. No. They don't have that. Where do we meet you? At the British Boxing Board of Control Mill. They've got an award for boxing. Damn. That's what I'm trying to say. Like the yes. first year Mark had to pick him up and put him on the yeah. stage. Last year, he's walking up the stage. Where we were at that time. Yeah. Oh, Oh my yeah. gosh! Which boxing board and control member? Because I yeah. saw you follow us. Because I think Mark went, "Wow, am I gonna follow Champ?" Champ goes, "Yeah, oh yeah!" <laughs> I remember now. I remember. Oh, cool. Thanks for reminding me. Oh no my idea. gosh! I remember. Now I know who you're talking about. Now that's awesome. No How idea. can I? Do you know what you? The, the, oh, thank you so the time much. Is spent 
It's, it's been so powerful. Your energy is infectious. Oh, you look darling. Uh, your partner, I want to salute him. The both of you he together. Was, yeah. yeah, I want to <laughs> salute him. The both of you guys together. Your journey yeah. is so inspiring to people Thank that you. have less, less burdens to carry. Yeah. And, and to know that hospitals like a regular place, no one likes going to the hospital. And it becoming a regular place where you have to take your child that is so stressful. Yes, man, it is. And you guys have chosen to lift up your spirits, Amen. to lift yes. up the spirits of your son, to be positive, to learn on the journey, mm -hmm. to be able to develop your own characters on the journey. Yeah. Because that's what we've done. Yeah. You, you have probably grown more as a person going through this experience yeah. than you would have having a perfect you know, child yes. growing up, perfectly healthy child. Yeah. You you value life more. You know, everything has more meaning to you. You know, and I think that's made you really special individual. And I, and I thank God that there's people like you yes. who can hold on and understand that yes. there's growth and a process to life, accept what's happened, yeah. and live the best life that you have today. Oh, I to that. That, 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 funny that, because as you, as you said that that reminded me like if you said like the, the normal thing and all I hate that because what's normal you're not gonna make me say I'm normal it's like what's my the image of what was going on that night at the award event is just playing in my head it's like I could clearly remember it now yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my mark you said what you do is it whatsapp you the whole of that video so you can see champ and you can remember because that was the time I think there's about 500 in there and everyone stood up in there and clapped for him yeah, but I think I recorded it as well so I might need yeah. to check my group stories for that I think yeah. I recorded it because so he started going to the peacock yeah. didn't he mark started to take him to the peacock yeah. and he went from um he went from sort of like being in a wheelchair and walking in a flat and then mark how did it take you mark about six months to get him up to 25 minutes on a treadmill and, wow. then, and then um uh, uh anthony yard befriended him didn't he and took him under his yeah. wing and then james branch was his little trainer and you know that, that was his world and he, he said to me once i know why you come with me and daddy to the peacock i went why he went to look at all the boxes he went so you can stay out there <laughs> You know, he's a funny guy, do you know what I mean? Oh, he's a lovely boy, he's a lovely boy. The box on the walls, I had an hairdresser. Chat with mum, it's my night. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. I love it. How well he's doing now, isn't it? How well he's doing. <laughs> yeah. What a wonderful individual. I, I want to do whatever I can for that young man. I love to gift him with something. I love to meet him. Because being around him and inspiring him, never all of this stuff's all gone down and everyone feels safe again to be around yeah, each other. Absolutely. I'll be honoured to come and see him and give him a big hug, man. Yeah, of course. Welcome anytime. He's had his first jab, um, so we've got to stay home for 14 days. And then the next jab, they said it'll be in three months. Um, yeah. Because it, like, they've said if he gets it, it it's definitely sort of going to finish him off because we don't know if he's got an immune system. So we're going to wait on the um, the bloods to come back from that. That should be four weeks. And then yeah. he'll have his other jab, um, which is three months' time. And then after that, we can sort of... Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, Thank Sarah. Thank you so much, Sarah. Lovely to see you. Yes. Uh, Lovely to see you. <laughs> you too, Thank man. you for your time and thank you for inspiring uh, everyone. We love you so much, so much. Oh, uh, gorgeous. Life is hard, but we can do this. Yeah. If life was hard... We wouldn't have life. Yeah. Yes, and day by day, day by day, because today is a present. Yes. Yeah. Right, right, Take care. Right, right. Bye. 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 How do I turn it off? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excellent Guys, day. This has been a great day. Um, just wonderful people. We've got wonderful people in our communities. We can make a massive change. Um, guys, before we go, a couple of announcements. Uh, I think I made a breakthrough with Sainsbury's. Uh, they gave me some vouchers. You think you made a breakthrough? Yeah, Could you change that statement, I, I want more. I want more. But it's the beginning, sweetheart. So, so we've cracked it. it. The first <laughs> stage is we've got some vouchers from Sainsbury's. 
So we want to commend Sainsbury's for actually giving up something because we're going around to all these different uh, supermarkets mm -hmm. to be able to get um, support for people that need it. I know there's people out there that need some support with food, clothes and some toys. For and if kids. anyone online here at the moment know anyone who needs some support, could you please contact us so we what can get in touch with them, the support of what you're providing. Sweetheart. Well, like the food. Uh, yeah, the food, okay, the cool. clothes, and stuff like that. Yeah, so please, let us know. Know. please let us know. Please let us know. So we can support the them food as well. Bank. But because we've got the food vouchers, if you contact us and let us know, um, then we can go and be able to sort you out with what you need. Another important announcement is jobs. I can't believe it. I, I told everyone that you've got a choice of full time part-time and various different times on the do night uh day middle of the day whatever you want you know, seven hour shifts mm. they are and i've only had one guy contact me that's jumped on it i'm amazed yeah i know that you know it's, it might not be like the most sexy job in the world you know <laughs> being cleaning at london transport it but it's be way sexy. better than sitting around doing nothing without and money not earning 10 pounds 75 an hour doing nothing so jump on it that's a great place to start you know just earning money and knowing you earn good honest money is a wonderful start i've got loads of other opportunities that's not the only one you know if you've got an idea young people you've got an idea let's turn it into a business let's get you the startup you need to start your business share this share this platform because other people need to know young people need to know that you don't need to sell drugs you've got transferable skills if you can weigh up scales if you can work out the money for an eighth and a quarter and an ounce and whatever and do all your customer services your marketing for your products and all of that then you're a businessman but let's go into some legit business instead of poisoning your community with your class a's and all of that foolishness let's go into business let's do things right any problem you have, inbox me, challenge me. If I can't deal with it, challenge me and I'll find someone who can. Someone can. Yay. Uh, we just want to help you and serve the community. God bless all of you. Take Thank care, you everyone. For staying tuned. If life, uh, if the Lord permits, we will see you all again. The job is same a job. time next Damn week. Right. Give me a wave, guys. I love oh, to Sharuk wave says to you. I'm also recruiting, Mark. Sharuk says, she, oh, that's, uh, that's insurance. Okay, so if you, if you could talk really well, if you know how to, like, you know, sell ice cream or an ice to an Eskimo, <laughs> then um, you're the one that Sharuk needs. Um, and we could have Sharuk come in to speak for five minutes about his job opportunity um, next week to let other people know. So let's do this. Let's get people work. Let's get people fed. Let's get people housed and clothed. And let's look after each other. Let's just spread the love. And I'll do whatever I've got to do for you. God bless you. God remember bless the you motivation. All. Remember the guests. Uh, remember that there's nothing that you cannot get through. And life is a journey. And every experience you go through is sent to build you and make you, not to break you. And that choice is yours. And remember, if the mountain was <clears throat> smooth, we wouldn't be able to climb it. Boom. Take care, everyone. So, God man. bless you all. Take care, guys.